Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Akusia Behine. If you're new, you're welcome. I'm looking at my microphone. I don't know why I'm doing that. But welcome to my channel if you're new. I'm Akusia Behine. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for always coming back. I love you. Um, in today's video, as you guys can see or tell by the title, I am going to be talking about very sensitive and emotional, but I'm going to be talking about losing my mom at an early stage and how it affected my life and how I dealt with it and all of that kind of stuff. Um, it's, it's quite a heavy topic, um, so forgive me if along the line I sound like I'm, I'm, I, I don't have the words to say what I want to say because I usually get like that sometimes um, and it's about my mom so <laughs> you should know it's very emotional but anyways that's what I'm going to be talking about so if you're interested in listening please keep on listening I guess it's a story time chit chat whatever it is but I'm not doing my makeup nothing of that sort just sitting and chatting because you guys know that I like to do that so yeah subscribe subscribe <laughs> subscribe to my channel and yeah let's just talk so um i lost my mom i'm, I'm just start from i lost my mom <laughs> i lost my mom when i was right out of high school right out of secondary school seven months after school so i remember clearly seven months after school now i mean i got back from high school um from secondary school my mom was okay as always you know she was she was fine um i came back home and then i went to my auntie's place for <clears throat> to spend time i mean because I was out of school, you know, out of school, you want to be free, you want to explore, you want to do your hair. I'd already done my hair at the time. This was like a month after. So I was just free. I went to my auntie's place um, just to spend some time with her because I just wanted some time away from home. You know, like you're going for vacation, your auntie's is very normal. So we had a party. My auntie, my auntie's daughter, my auntie's older daughter had a party at the time. I mean, I should be saying my cousin to make it easier. Um, so my cousin had a party at the time. And so my mom came for the party because I was, I was home already. I was at my auntie's place already. So I, I didn't need to like, you know, come to the party. So I was there and then my mom came. We had fun that day. I remember so well. I actually just... I'm picturing it right now and we had fun so she came for the party um, the party happened we all like did the party blah 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 and then she went home as usual and I stayed at my auntie's place be I mean because she was fine she didn't have any problems she was okay so the next day um, the next day I think the next day I don't remember which day exactly but the next day I went to another cousin's place Lodina I mean I don't I don't have to mention names but I went to another cousin's place and <clears throat> so I was with my cousin I remember so well I was with my cousin and I was with my cousin I was with another cousin <laughs> well it were three I think we're three I did on that day we're three me Happy Lodina, I remember so well. We're going to buy Indomie. There was this really good Indomie close to Lodina's hostel. So I was with her. I was buying the Indomie, Riada. And there I had a phone call from my cousin, another cousin, um, saying that my mom, my mom was sick and she couldn't walk all of a sudden. I don't know, I don't know what was going on. You know, and I was I was pretty young at the time. I had just gotten out of secondary school. Um, so I didn't take it as like heavy. I mean, I, I just took it as as though my mom is sick. Yeah, my mom is sick. You know, like my mom is sick. So then my cousin stated the urgency of like how sick she is. She's bedridden. She can't walk right now. Everything is just going downhill. <clears throat> So, um, so I had to rush cause I'm, I'm, I'm my mom's only daughter. 
and my mom's i am my mom's only daughter so i had to rush to my cousin's place where my mom was at the time um so i went there when i got there my mom was just laying on the bed and i was asking her i mean she told me oh my god i can't believe i have to relive this whole thing like i literally have to relive it to be able to tell you guys <laughs> and she was telling me how it happened and she said she just woke up and she didn't feel she didn't feel okay again like she just started feeling pain um so it was from her spinal cord down to her waist so she didn't have any control the spinal cord is what controls literally every movement that your body does so spinal cord is going to control all the joints literally everything meets at your spinal cord um so it basically affected her every movement she was bedridden flat 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 and she she wasn't sick before that my mom history about my mom my mom was a very healthy person um she works out a lot yes she works out a lot she goes to um what's it called there's this thing that happened in Ghana where they have centers where you can go for like training. It's not necessarily a gym. It's this Chinese, Chinese people. They started doing it. It was a lot in Ghana. Um, so she was going for that where you get to do massages and stuff like that. I'll talk about that towards the end. Um, I mean, when I have to talk about it. So she was, she was a very healthy person, eating healthy even if she makes Indomie, she will add Moringa or Dandelion leaves, you know, like she was that healthy. So obviously it was nothing, it, was, it wasn't anything like food related, you know, nothing of that sort. Um, so she was, she was bedridden. I saw her, it wasn't so good. So um, day two, day three, I mean, day after day, she just kept getting worse. Day after day, she wasn't getting any better. Day after day, she couldn't do anything, couldn't, she, she, mobility for her was difficult. She couldn't move around. So I had to dedicate literally every second of my day to take care of her. I bath, I bathe her, bath her. I don't know how you guys will say it, but however, I cook for her, do everything for her. Um, like I said, I'm the only girl. My mom gave birth to boys and me <laughs> or men and me. I'm the last born. So it was only my duty to take care of her. My big brother will go to work and come back home, blah, blah, blah. You know, in the beginning, it was okay. In the beginning, she could at least walk here and there. She was bedridden, but she could at least make a few movements, you know, like to the bathroom to, you know, to short, short distances. So we used to live... We used to live in Odoko, I remember so well. It started in Odoko and 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 in Odoko it was okay. In Odoko it was okay. In Odoko she could go to church. I remember I'll put a picture of her. Um one Sunday we went to church and she looked like she was getting better. She, that Sunday she could actually go to church. But I mean upon going to church and everything, she got very tired. Um it was too much for her. She, she was stressing, you know, and then, I mean, so after that day, I thought that she was going to get better. After that day, I, th I thought that, oh, she's getting well. Looks like she's getting well. And, and I mean, moving, f my mom is also really into herbal medicines and stuff like that. So at the time we hadn't even gone to the hospital or anything. I think she had, no, we had, we had gone to the hospital. She went to the hospital with my auntie. My auntie has a family doctor. So we went to see the doctor who gave her some painkillers and like stuff you know, but they couldn't, they hadn't done an x-ray at the time. So we didn't know exactly what was wrong with her. And she just said she was feeling pain in her waist. So it made it difficult for her to walk. Um, so from Ondoko, we had to move to Kaswa. We just, we were moving, we're relocating to another place. Um, so um, from Ondoko, she was sick. Then we moved to Kaswa. Kaswa as well, she was very sick still. Naturally, all of us, all of us, like my aunties, my cousins, everybody just because my mom is not the type to get sick. My mom barely gets sick. Like, I don't remember that since she got sick, that made her die. I don't remember the last time that my mom actually got sick sick. The only thing that I know that she has is ulcer, which I have as well. 
so that i see pretty much a lot and i get sick of that as well so it's like we both have that but aside that we both barely get sick i will barely like i barely go to the hospital i mean you go to the hospital for checkups and stuff like that but i barely barely go to the hospital for any other reason aside also any other reason aside also and same applied to my mom so like i said when she got sick nobody thought that it was something so much so because she wasn't that type of person she wasn't the person who gets sick like she never gets sick you know we moved to kaswa and kaswa was when i remember that we went to the hospital i took her to the hospital um to Kolebu, I remember so well. And I'm not even going to say this to bash Kolebu or anything, but they really had bad service at the time. I don't know for now. At that time, there were so many people who needed doctors to attend to them. When we got there, they didn't even have any rooms. Um, she needed a wheelchair to sit on. It took me a while to get a wheelchair for her to sit down because she couldn't walk around freely like I would do. And um, there was such a long queue of people waiting to meet just one doctor. And this doctor is a foreign doctor. This doctor is a white doctor. She was a white woman. And everybody was waiting to meet just that one doctor. That day was so long and so stressful. You know, Kolebu is just so stressful. Like, you go and do x-ray here. and go. That day, we spent close to so much money just on one day. You know, just one day. And I don't come from a rich family. My mom at the time wasn't working. I had just gotten out of school. This stuff is very emotional for me, you know. Everything about, like, my mom's death and everything is very emotional for me. I don't even want to go into it. Um, we spent so much money only on that day. We had already spent so much money going back and forth, moving to a new place, you know, all of that stuff. Um, so that day at Kolebu was just very terrible. Spent so much money and it didn't end at anything. They couldn't tell us anything exactly that was wrong with her. Can you believe this? Like, they didn't even tell us exactly what they did. They, they can't see anything. They can't see what's wrong with her. After all the x-rays, they don't see nothing. And the person is sick, you know? I, I remember so well, after that hospital appointment we went home and we're just home you know just praying church people will come and pray for her um she was still very much bed reading but she was okay you know she can talk she can make us laugh we laugh she eats um she takes her medicine so in my head i thought that she was gonna get better you know honesty i promise in my head i thought that i never if you if 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 I tell you that I ever thought for a second that my mom would pass away, it's a lie. I never, I never saw it coming. So this was 20, 2013. What I'm talking about is 2013. So towards 2013, because that was when I got out of high school. So towards the end of 2013, we celebrated Christmas. You know, you know when you you have a sick person at home and they get through a year and then they get into the new year. And you're like, oh, I'm grateful. It means that they're gonna do it. You know, like it's just it's it's bad to lose someone in Christmas. You know, it's just bad. <laughs> it's just bad. Um, so we went through 2013 Christmas. Church people came to visit. Family, family came to visit. Um, my aunties, you know, like everybody came to visit. She was okay. She could sit up, right? I remember the last day before she passed, she could sit up, right? I fed her with fufu. She was fine. She was actually laughing that day. Oh, she was good. She felt like she said it herself that she felt like she was stronger. And it was just, it was just whatever, you know? So new year came. I mean, 2013 passed beautifully new year came first day of new year um was a day that i said i fed her fufu and everything and she was fine and we had a good conversation you know everybody thought that oh things are beginning to look up so we're happy my auntie came to visit oh my god so that day that same day um everybody went home she was happy she slept and then the next day she didn't wake up that was just it that was just it she didn't say anything to anybody she didn't complain about anything um she just didn't wake up she just didn't wake up 
she just didn't wake up and how it happened i mean how i found out i was home alone and it just makes me it, it's just really weird that that day i was home alone because you know i am I, at the time i was such a fiero kind of person like if they say fiero you understand i was afraid i was afraid of things like that i was i was afraid of um you know spirits like i was just afraid i just had so much fear in me so um i didn't know how god put me in that situation at that time i don't know why he did that up till now i don't know why he did that but now i just know that i'm stronger than i think i am that's why god keeps put, putting me in certain situations because he knows that i can be able to get through them that's why he puts me there so my brother usually leaves for work very early in the morning so this is 2nd january um 2014 um my brother usually leaves very early in the morning we slept in the living room that day my brother and i because obviously christmas christmas um, new year new year you know like you're just chilling so we slept in the living room um so my brother left for work and i woke up pretty early that day. i'm i wake up pretty early a lot i mean by myself every day so i woke up and and i usually wake up very hungry that's just how my stomach is structured every morning i'm hungry like very hungry like from long time ago that's how my stomach has always been so i woke up i was hungry went to the kitchen dished myself some food i didn't even go and check on her i just dished myself some food and then i went to sit back in the living room and i was watching tv but you know when something just doesn't feel right like something just doesn't feel right it's like i was eating i wasn't feeling the food that wasn't me i usually like my food you know and it was food that i liked it was christmas food you know usually christmas food is done with some extra touch or whatever <laughs> and it's i mean like with love and everything so i wasn't feeling my food i don't know why for whatever reason it was i just wasn't feeling my food that morning so i'm like you know what let me go and grab water in my mom's room so there's there's water in the fridge but i just wanted to go and grab water in her room in her fridge just so that i could low-key check on her you know <laughs> so that day that morning i i went into her room um opened the door and then i just went straight to the fridge took the water and then and then upon taking the water i turned to look at her on the bed and it looked like she was still sleeping um so usually another thing that i do a lot is i don't think that i do it a lot but if someone is sleeping i usually like to look at their back to see if they're you know their diaphragm you know when you're breathing your diaphragm doing that so automatically it gives your body that kind of posture so automatically even if you're sleeping and someone looks at you they see that you're doing like your body is doing up and down which shows that you're still breathing something of that sort so i looked at her and my instincts anybody's instincts is never wrong anyway i just looked at her and i realized that her back wasn't going back and forth and i looked again at the time when i saw that her back wasn't going back and forth i wasn't thinking anything so i was just looking again to see you know sometimes it takes a little bit of time for you to see if the person's actually breathing so i was looking standing there for a second and then i mentioned her name i was like ma and she she i mean she still wasn't saying anything but i thought she was deep deep asleep or something you know so i went close by i mean i went close to where she was went close to her bed and then i touched her and upon touching her i realized that she was cold and like i said i have never been in that situation before where someone had to die in front of me you know i don't even know i mean like i don't know i don't know i didn't know what a dead body looked like i didn't know i didn't know shit about dead people like i had nothing nothing so i touched her i realized that she was cold then i took my hands off immediately it shook me you know 
And then I started calling her name again. I said, oh my God, I can't, I can't believe that I had to go through this. I started calling her name again. I was like, ma, ma. And I saw that she wasn't responding. And I looked at her back again. I saw that she wasn't breathing. Then I tried to touch her again. I realized that she was cold. And immediately I started to be, I mean, that fear came back again. I started to be afraid. Like, I, I started to think, because I was in a whole house by myself. Like a four-bedroom house by myself with a gate with boy squatters like such a big house it was a house that was given to us by my mom's friend to take care of for her while she was out of the country so it was a big house like big big house um and i was there alone with a buddy of my mom and technically it's my mom so i'm not supposed to be afraid but she's dead so i'm afraid i'm afraid i'm afraid she's i don't know i was just afraid like i said i was very young at the time so i was just very afraid you know and so immediately I called my dad. Immediately I called my dad. And then I'm like, I'm trying to wake my mom up and she's not she's not budging. Like she's not saying anything. And my dad was like, I should calm down, but I'm a kid. He doesn't think that I know somebody who is dead. So I can't just say that she's dead. I can't say that for a fact. So I should go outside and call someone. Someone to come in to check what's going on. So so I just went outside. I remember, I think I just went outside. There was a shop next to the house. So I went there, spoke to them. I'm like, my mom, I think my mom is not waking up, blah, blah, blah. So they came inside. Two men came inside. And then they came to check. But they also didn't want to tell me that she was passed or she had passed. And they, they said that um, they just think that she's unconscious. So they have to take her to the hospital as soon as possible. Um, so they picked her up and when someone dies, obviously they get very stiff. It's not something that I want to talk about, but yeah, they get very stiff cause blood is not flowing again. So, um, if you're, if, if someone dies and their finger, their finger is like this, their finger becomes like this, like it stays like that. So it's, it was just really crazy. Um, but when they picked her up from the bed, taking her into the car and everything, I knew that she was gone. I just knew that she was passed. I just knew that she had passed at that time. I mean, I just knew from the time I touched her that she was gone. And, oh, I remember so well, even before calling my dad, when I tapped her one, two, the first thing that I said is, Ma, <laughs> the first thing that I said is, Ma, don't do this. Like, that's the, I remember so well. I said those, those words, those exact words. I was like, Ma, don't do this. Like, I didn't, I didn't know how to break it down. I just got out of high school. I lost my mom. I never lived with my dad. You know, my dad had been overseas for years. I didn't live with him. I'd lived with my mom all my life. She was my life, basically. <laughs> so, um, they came to take care, put her in the car. We went to the Casa Hospital. When we got there, then they said that she, she passed, like, overnight she passed during the night or whatever so she had passed a couple of hours ago so that's why she had even become like hard because she had passed long time ago so so i'm um, the doctor said that um they didn't have a mortuary there so i had to make plans for the mortuary blah 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 so i started calling people started calling my aunties my brother my brother came from work my auntie came as well my other auntie as well came like family started showing up and and so so we had to arrange and take her out of kaswa to kolebu mortuary so i did all of that arrangement we booked a couple of cars um and dead bodies don't go in ambulances i don't know why i honestly don't know why i have no idea why um but ambulances don't take dead bodies so we had to put her in a taxi which is also not right so they literally had to sit her upright like she was okay because if police saw us with a dead body in the car it wasn't going to be good so they sit her in the middle i remember my auntie was sitting next to her and my brother was sitting next to her and my other auntie was in the front and I was in another whole car because I couldn't sit in that car. I don't know. I was going crazy. Like so many thoughts were, was going through my head, you know? And so we got to the mortuary. 
deposited the body, did all the paperwork. My brother went to death and birth or whatever, went to do all of the necessary stuff. And I kept telling myself, it's real. Like my mom has actually passed away. Like I have actually lost my mom. I don't want to cry and I'm not going to cry. I promised myself that I wasn't going to cry talking about this, but it's my mom and it's very emotional. Like there's never a single day that I think about her and it doesn't make me want to cry. Like I really don't want to cry. Uh, ooh. Uh, I promised myself that I wasn't going to cry during this video. <clears throat> so, like I was saying, um, from the mortuary, we did all the paperwork, all of that stuff. And then we came back home. I had to, I didn't want to go back to the house where she passed because, like I said, it was a big house. I lived, we lived, basically lived there alone. The neighborhood itself was very quiet and I was young. And you know, when it comes to African um, parents and all of that, you can't leave a young woman living by herself. Like, it's just, you know, that thing. So, um, I had to go to my auntie's place and, you know, I couldn't believe that it had happened, you know, I couldn't believe that it had happened, but yet it had happened. And I couldn't believe that it was my mom because one thing that I kept saying was, why is it my mom? You know, why was it my mom? So, um, we got to my auntie's place. Every, everyone was heavy. Everyone was crying. I remember so well that day, that very day, I cried so much. Uh, that very day I cried so much because I just couldn't wrap my mind around it, you know? really didn't want to cry. Uh, like I was saying, I remember that day, I cried so much. I'm trying not to mess up my makeup, you know? Like, I'm trying <laughs> really not to make up. Anyway, so that day, I remember crying so much because I just didn't understand what was going on. Like, Everybody else was dying, yes, but my mom, no, no. I felt like that was too far. Like, I, f I felt like you had taken it too far. Like, whoever it was controlling that situation had taken it too far because you couldn't take my mom just like that. Like, why would you do that? I started blaming God. I started blaming the universe, you know. I was just really disappointed in so many things. And I must say that that day changed my life. Guys, I need you to forgive me. I honestly thought that I could do this without crying. Um, but again, you should know that it's my mom and it's very sensitive. Um, that day, that day literally turned my life around in so many ways that I didn't see. You know, it hit me so hard. That was the one thing that I'll say that hit me the hardest. A lot of things usually wouldn't, wouldn't hit me, you know. A lot of things wouldn't affect me. Like, I don't feel... I, I don't want to say I didn't have feelings for so many things. But even up till now, if you ask, like, a lot of my people in my family and stuff, they'll tell you that I act like I don't care. That's what my dad is always saying. He's always saying that my I don't care attitude, my I don't care attitude. But, you know, like I'm saying, a lot of things didn't hit me as much as that hit me. It hit me so hard, you know, it hit me so hard because I couldn't wrap my mind around what my life was going to be without my mom because, like I was saying, I had lived with my mom my entire life. She was my sister, she was my friend, she was everything to me. Everything. And I was her only daughter, so you can imagine. I'm the only person she would talk to about about like girl stuff like she we were like that we were very close um so, so the very first day that she passed it was very hard for me to wrap my mind around so many things because i felt betrayed by god i felt like uh, 
I felt like I had no business losing my mom. Like, I felt like, how? She was such a young and vibrant woman. She was such a beautiful woman. Even prettier than I am. A lot of people told us every time when they see us, they're like, is that your sister? Is that your big sister? She was that pretty, you know? I guess pretty doesn't keep you alive, whatever. But, um... That day, that day just changed so many things in my life. Um, my life had to turn around. Now I had to live with my auntie. I mean, obviously I'd lived with my auntie. I lived with my auntie even when I was younger, way younger. So I didn't have a problem. My aunties are beautiful people. So I didn't have a problem living with my auntie. But no one could understand. No one could wrap their minds around the fact that Auntie Christy was gone. That was what they called her. She was such a beautiful soul. Like, she had everyone love her, you know. She's very calm. My mom is, like, almost the opposite of me. She's very calm, cool. Like, I can be very cool, but I'm, I am more like a talker. You guys know I talk a lot. My mom is a lot more reserved. She would only sing in church. Barely had any friends. I would tell you, she barely had any friends. Literally had no friends told like there was just this one person that i knew was her very good friend <sighs> so that was how i lost my mom that was how she passed that was how she passed and so we did the funeral everything in february so everything passed i mean like we did everything um but after that day my life changed so many things in my life changed i didn't even see all these things coming i didn't even see all these things like all these changes coming because saying i was generally very disappointed in the fact that i has i had lost my mom at such a young age you know um i was generally very disappointed in god generally because she was this like she was such a church girl you know she was just such a christian she was she dedicated all her life for the church that's my mom and everybody in the church knew her. I told you guys before, I think in my previous video, she was a music, whatever, whatever in my church, you know. She was such a church girl. She dedicated all her life to the church, spent all her life with the church. Literally everything with the church. So a lot of things didn't make sense to me because, like I said, I was young. I was now growing up. And i felt like why would god do that why would god take someone who has been so faithful to him why would god i just had so many questions in my mind i had so many things that i needed answers to i didn't understand like i felt like it was so wrong i felt like someone made a mistake with my mom's passing <laughs> you know i mean after that after that everything in my life just started changing i had to move to go and live with my dad for a little bit um because i wanted to I, it's not like i was forced um i went to live with my dad in kumasi for for a good amount of time went to school there for a little bit um but it wasn't working for me there as well you know nothing nothing seemed to be working for me since i lost my mom um, like nothing seemed to be working at the time when I lost my mom, everything was just all over the place. And it put me in such a bad space talking about how it, it brought me to a point where I had so much fear in me that I, I there was fear of losing people. It got to a point where I didn't want to get close to people because what if I lose you? Like, why are you coming into my life? You just want to come into my life and go away and leave me crying again like my mom did. I was angry. I was angry at the fact that my mom... So didn't she see that I was young? Like, why, did she, why didn't she tell spirits that she didn't want to go? You know, like, there were so many things on my mind. And she, she was obviously the only person that I wanted to ask those questions, you know, but couldn't ask those questions. So, um, I mean, after I lost my mom, I had to live life by myself, live life on my own life on my own terms because, um, I was out of secondary school. I had to make decisions, you know, I had to be a grown woman and, 
And one thing that I'll just say is, if you have your mom, please appreciate her and be grateful for her in whichever way you can right now. Right now, you, you probably might not see it. Right now, you might not feel it. But when they're not there, that's when you see how much you need them. When they're not there, that's how much you see the essence of having a mom. You Sometimes you just need your mom to talk to. Sometimes you just need your mom to lay on her like shoulder and cry you know sometimes it's just your mom that you need and this was a case where mine was gone so every time that i felt like that i cried that's why this video has been quite hard for me to do because every time that i think about her and i think about the fact that i could use her right now in this times where i'm married i have kids and everything i could use her right now you know it just really hurts um, and it just put me in a very bad space, put me in a very bad space. I didn't want to get close to anyone. I didn't want to open up to anyone again because I didn't want to lose anyone to, to my best knowledge. I felt like why was the point getting close to someone and then losing the person, you know? So I just started living life on my own terms, doing anything and everything because uh, there's no mom to advise you, you know, I was a big girl on my own terms, doing everything and everything on my own terms. Um, but there were days where I would just break down so bad because I just needed my mom. Like, I want to be home with my mom. There were days where I could just take my phone and ring, like, I mean, dial her phone number and just call hoping that she would pick up. There were days when I was hoping that I'll just be walking in town and I'll see her. I don't know like there was just so much going on in my mind and it's it's been a crazy journey um someone might ask that it's been seven years why do you still feel it like it's was just yesterday I don't know but every time that you think about it the tears are so fresh every time that you think about it the feelings are so fresh it's just like is like yesterday it happened yesterday you know everything is just so fresh it feels so fresh every passing day every passing day it feels like i remember vividly what happened <laughs> and it's very hard to forget it you know love your moms as much as you can pray for your moms as much as you can because really when you lose your mom you lose a huge part of your life that you never get back i don't know i don't know how people get that back Someone told me that before and I experienced it with my mom and I realized that you never get it back. You never get that love back from no one. I mean, except for my husband. I appreciate that man so much. I'm grateful for him so much. He's the only person. I mean, let me not even go into that. But um, pray for your moms. Love them. Be nice to them. Buy them gifts. Do everything that I didn't do for my mom. Because right now, sometimes I just sit down and um, I wonder if, I mean, I just want her to come back so that I can do the things that I never could do for her. You know, sometimes I just look at myself right now and I look at my life right now. And I look at the fact that I've been able to travel. I've been able to get married. I have a kid, you know. She would have been so proud of me. She would have been so happy. She would have been grateful to God, you know, her only daughter. Should have been very happy right now if she was alive. I would have taken care of her. Should have taken care of my daughter. You know, like, I'm sorry. So many things. Um, so many things that, that you wish that you could do with your mom. That you're just handicapped because you don't have a mom. Don't have anyone to do it with. You know, and it's sad. Uh, and it's very sad and um moving forward moving forward i just had to start looking at the brighter side of life because i cried let me be honest with you guys i cried continuously for like five years for five years or for like four to five years i was just i was just i don't know how to put it like i was just crying and not doing anything meaningful with my life. I'll be honest with you guys. I was just doing anything and everything. 
and just crying and I kept blaming God all through those years I just kept blaming God just whenever someone wronged me I felt like if my mom was around how dare you <laughs> you know because that's how protected I felt when she was around so it really affected me after high school I couldn't do anything with my life like nothing everything that and and you, you don't know how it feels till you go through it. People say it, and that's the, that's the truth. You don't know how it feels till you go through it. Um, like, me saying that, like, three to four to five years of my life, I couldn't do anything with it. it might sound like an exaggeration or whatever, but really, I couldn't do anything with my life within those years because I just kept looking back and thinking, how did that happen to me? I just kept looking back and thinking, if she was here, things would have been different. I just kept looking back and thinking, if she was here, maybe my life would have been better. If she was here, maybe my life would have been this. If she was, that's all I kept doing throughout all those years and crying and blaming God and crying and blaming God and crying and bl nothing. I didn't do anything. Anytime I tried to do something, I just shut myself down again because I felt like, ah, what is life? Like, after all, what is life? Like, I gave up on life. That was how bad it was. I gave up on life completely 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 um till till little by little i started finding little things that were making me happy again you know little things that i could do that would take my mind off it but it never goes away i mean yeah definitely occasionally i'll think about it still cry occasionally i'll admit her still cry you know but now looking back um um, I, I'm not going to say I'm grateful that my mom passed. No, I'm not never grateful that she passed, but I'm grateful that I went through that life because I, le I learned so much from that life. Um, it shaped me in so many ways. I thought that I was going to be a messed up person. Trust me. I thought that I couldn't do anything because my mom was gone. I thought that nothing good could come out of my life because, uh, the person who prays for me, you know, one pastor actually told me that one time my mom prays for me a lot my mom prays for us a lot <laughs> like she prays for us a lot um so i felt like the person who prays for me you know intervenes on my behalf all of that she's gone like i was now all by myself i was the only girl and two brothers who are old you know living their lives the fathers they could do is be there for me as brothers but you know but they can't replace my mom so it was really hard. It was really hard. It was really hard for me. Um, I, like I'm saying, it took years for me to to be okay again. It took years for me to find some joy. It took years for me to like get over the fact that she was never going to come back. No matter how much I cried, no matter how much I got angry at God or the world or whatever. She was never going to come back. And I just had to come to terms with that fact. And that fact took years for me to come to terms with it. It took it took me forever. And then I finally came to terms with the fact that she was never going to come back. So I had to find something to do with my life. Um, and then, and then I, I started doing stuff, you know. And then I started, like, doing things that made me happy, like YouTube, recording makeup videos, doing DIY, going to radio school, going to makeup school. Um, I just started doing things, you know, things that could help me find myself as a person and not not just rely. I, I was just very reluctant when my mom was there. That's how what I realized after she died. I realized how much dependent I was on my mom at the time. I realized how much, um, it's like my life revolved around her. She was my everything. In secondary school, Form 4, which was like, I was 17 years at the time, she was still shopping for my panties, my everything. Buying my shoes, everything. <laughs> I was that much of a baby to my mom. That much of a baby to my mom. She was doing my everything for me, you know, and she has it in her to take care of you. That's just who she is. She would do everything. My mom won't let me cook. She won't let me clean the dishes. Nothing. And it's not like... It's not like... 
it's like I don't know how to do it, but she just won't let me do it. You know, I'll come to the kitchen and then she'll, um, the kitchen is too small. Go, go. Then she'll come and save me. Like, she will literally come and save me on a serving tray. You know, but she, my mom was the sweetest person. She was like the sweetest person that ever happened to my life. And she just, whoop, went with the wind. Yeah, that, that was exactly what happened. And... Um, I mean, in that same year, I lost my auntie as well. My mom's little sister, who they were like this. They both died the same year. My mom died in January. My auntie died in November. My auntie that I moved to live with after my mom died also died in November. Um, so that 2014 year was a pretty hard year for me. Um, it was very hard for me. And nobody minds you when your mom is dead. It's like everybody just leaves you. They just leave your life for you. It's like, go. Oh, yeah. It's like when your mom dies, your family is dead. That thing they said in tree. Oh, mommy, one way, boost me. It's so true. It's so, so true. Um, you feel like you don't have anybody. The closest to a mom that I had was my auntie, and she died as well. You feel like you have nobody. You feel like, you feel like, ah. Uh, it's crazy losing someone knowing that they never come back losing someone knowing that you never see them on the surface of this earth again losing someone knowing that they are gone you don't know where to you can't call them on phone you can't find them on facebook instagram nowhere they're gone they're just not in this world again they're in a different realm and it's crazy but at the time, like I said, I was very young. Um, I mean, as compared to people who are young like that here, <laughs> Ghana, 18, you're young. You're very young. I was very young. Um, it took a lot of time for me to come to terms with a lot of things, like I said. Um, and as you guys can see, even up until now, seven years on, I still cry every time that I think about it. I still cry every time that my mom's picture shows up, you know. I still cry every time that I feel like I miss my mom. You know, sometimes I'm here and sometimes I feel like I want to call my mom. I just want to call my mom. Like, sometimes I just want to call my mom. Or sometimes, like, you have, you know, as a mom now and being married and everything, sometimes you, you just want to talk to your mom about certain things that you can't talk to anybody else about because your mom is the father that you can trust when it comes to talking about things like that. And there's no mom to call. There's literally no mom to call. Like, there's no mom on my phone. And it's crazy. But also, like I said, moving forward, I I just want to say that I'm grateful for everything that I've been through in life ever. Everything. Not just losing my mom, but every other thing that I've been through in life, I'm very grateful for it. I'm grateful that it's made me who I am today. I'm grateful that it's shaped my mind to become what it is today. Um, and also if my mom didn't die, I, I wouldn't have known that people could die like that, you know? So at least now I know, <laughs> at least now I know. So I'm more grateful for people in my life than I used to be. It just hurts me that I didn't show my mom. You know, when you're young, you just see your mom as your mom. You see it as her duty to be your mom, you know? I feel like when you're young, you don't we don't see mothers as anything else but mothers. We just see them as, oh, she's my mom. She's supposed to feed me. She's supposed to clothe me. We don't think about anything else than that. We, we just think about the responsibilities that they owe to us. But we don't see that we need to give them something back in return, you know. And it's just sad that it's now that I'm at a point in my life where I could actually do something for her. I could actually make her happy. I could actually make her proud. I mean, she was always very proud of me. Um, but now is a time where I can't do it because she's not here, you know? So, it's not good. It's good. Whatever. I just, um, I just felt like it was time for me to open up and talk about losing my mom and how it affected my life and how... It put the fear of rejection in me. I just started rejecting people. I just started being very mean to people. Um, I didn't just allow... That pushed me to not just allowing people into my space. So if you guys watch my videos and then I talk about the fact that I don't have so many friends or whatever, whatever, like my circle is really small. It's all because of that, you know. It's all because of the fact that 
the fear of losing people just really cripples me so much that it's very hard for me to love someone so much. I feel like, what if you go away tomorrow and I'm not seeing you again? Then now I have to go and love another person all over again. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it, you know? So it put, it, it definitely, it definitely put the fear of rejection in me. Um, I mean, the fear of being rejected myself and then also rejecting people, good people who are coming into my life and all of that. And it just generally put this huge fear in me that took years, like I said, to get over. It took years to make my mind up about it and everything. Um, but yeah, seven years on. This video was supposed to come out on Ma Mother's Day, just so that it, it commemorated Mother's Day. But it's also very sad, so I couldn't put it up on Mother's Day. Um, so as and when you guys see this video, know that a big happy Mother's Day to every mom. I mean, it's not yet Mother's Day in the US, it's in the UK and in Ghana. So a big happy Mother's Day to every mom including myself, including my mom. May her soul rest in peace. I love her so much. I always will love her. She's my life. She always will be my life. And I know that she's watching over me wherever she is. She sees me. Um, she still loves me. She still protects me and my brothers every day. She protects my daughter. Um, she's just happy with how far my life has come. I know that if she was here right now, she would be very happy with what I've turned into she would just be very grateful and content with the fact that her only daughter is okay, you know. There's just some peace of mind with knowing that your child is okay. <laughs> like, there's just some peace of mind with knowing that now that I'm a mom. <sighs> um, so, yeah. I didn't envision this video going that way but it still did the train is coming so i quickly have to end the video um oh my god <laughs> but yeah i just wanted to open up about losing my mom and everything that i went through let this train pass so um yeah like i said i just wanted to share this with you i felt like it was finally time for me to open up seven years after um open up and talk about how I lost my mom, how it affected me, and um, I'm still dealing with it, you know, honesty, I'm still dealing with it. There are days when I break down so much, and it's just about the fact that I've lost my mom, which is seven years ago. There are days when I still break down, even in this day, like this morning, like this current times, there are days when I'll just break down and just lay in bed and cry, just because I miss her, you know, stuff like that. So I really am still dealing with it. I don't think that losing someone so close like that is something that you ever get get through. You, I don't think that you you will ever fully get through that. Like, I don't think that you will ever fully deal with the emotions of losing someone. If I get there, definitely I'll share it with you guys. If I ever get to a point where, oh, I'm okay and it doesn't make me sad again and nothing, I will definitely share it with you guys. But as of now, I'm not there yet. It still makes me sad. I still cry every time that I think about her. I still cry every time that I go on social media and I see other people with their moms and it's so nice and I wish that my mom was here so I could do something so nice for her, you know? Like, I just wish she was here, you know? So I'm still dealing with it. Um, the fear of rejection and everything I dealt with, that's how I got married because I don't think that I would have been able to be that close to someone else if I didn't deal with that. Um, That's how I had a baby and everything, like... I dealt with that fear. Meeting my husband was also a very big part of dealing with some of my mom's loss because he helped me a lot to see life in a different way, you know, and everything. So, like I said, I'm still dealing with it. I, I'm, um, I'm still trying to find strength every day because I'm a mom now. So, I just, like, it just keeps reminding me of how losing my mom affected me, you know, so... I'm gonna go away now. I don't want to keep blubbing because the more like I'll, I'll just keep going on and on about un probably unnecessary things that I don't have to talk about, you know. Um, so yeah, if you have your mom now, that's all I'll say. If you have your mom now, be grateful for her, appreciate her. If you don't live with her, call her to check on her, um, whenever you can. Um, love her, you know, surprise her, you know, like do her hair for her, like. 
do things for your mom because trust me when they are no more you wish that they would even come just so you could break their nails you could break their fingernails or you do come just so you could rub their backs like you wish that they were there just so you could do the littlest thing that you could you didn't even think of doing for them when they were alive you know so i'm definitely gonna say that if you have your mom around please appreciate her love her pray for her be grateful for her buy her gifts spoil her she deserves all of that love she deserves all of that attention and you wouldn't know till she's not around you 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 would never know it never feels like that till she's not around you um so yeah um i don't know if you guys like this video um whatever but yeah comment down below if you have similar experience or if you have anything that you want to say and yeah i'm gonna go away now thank you guys so much for watching i love you guys and as always, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.